Good evening, and welcome to Spine Chilling Cinema. I am your host, Oliver, the caretaker Collins, along with my lovely co-host, the queen of shenanigans, Alice, and her trusty as always, Cat Bubbles. Alice wants to know why I look so beat. Well, Alice, you should kind of know this. As you all should know, Alice loves warm weather, hot weather even. And she hates when I have the air conditioner on. So today, she decided no air conditioner and I am melting. No, not like the Wicked Witch of the West. I see what you think of me now, Alice. And she laughs. But the show must go on. And tonight... Of course, we have a film for you. It's more of an adventure mystery, yes indeed. From 1934, Mystery Liner. Not that kind of liner, it's like a ship. Well, why don't they say mystery ship? It. I can see how tonight's already going to be starting, Alice. Oh boy. But this one is directed by William Nye, which... Mr. Nye has directed many a film that has been shown on Spine Chilling Cinema. And this movie is based on a novel called The Ghost of John Holling. Yes, indeed. So, Alice, I think we should get to this film. Oh, Alice is worried I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. I might just do that. Alice says, then you're paying the extra electrical bill. Oh, boy. With that, let us get to tonight's feature film from 1934, with him now. We haven't had any report on him since early this morning. I think we better go up. I don't think I should leave him, Dr. Howard. But there's nothing more you can do for well, him. That's just it. Nothing seems to help him. You've been treating him since we left Panama and... And he's worse. My dear girl. Oh, I don't mean to say that you haven't done all you can, doctor, but medicine can't cure his mind. Hello, doctor. How is he today? This morning, as rational as you or I. But now, I don't understand it. Unlike any mental case I have ever seen. And there are times when he keeps muttering Professor Grimm's name to himself. I don't like it, sir. Well, it's probably overworked. Captain Holling hasn't had a vacation in years. Just the same, I would advise that you relieve him of command on this trip, Mr. Watson. When the Guthrie needs him more than it ever did? I 
you were going to meet me ashore for dinner last night. He was very bad, Cliff. I couldn't leave him. Was Downey a patient, too? You had dinner on board with him. What difference does it make? It's too bad it's mute me. What? Taking a poke at your first officer. Idiot. Of course, Lila. I've got to wait till I get a chief's berth before I get a break. Oh, you're talking like a child, Cleo. Well, I know you haven't given me any time lately. Still, Abe. What is it, Captain? I don't know. But it's... It's here. Like the engines pounding. Well, I'll be all right. Don't you think you ought to go away for a rest? Do your world of good, Captain. The vacation's just what you need. Huh. So that you're going to have my ship, eh? I've been watching you. Always waiting your chance to take her away from me. No, no, Captain. Downey's right. You need a rest. Then you will wait before making Professor Grimson's experiment? Well, I'm afraid we've gone too far for that. You mean that you'd let my ship go to sea without me? It will only be for one voyage. Why? You can't do that. Well, for 20 years, we've been together. I've nursed her through storms, lived with her. Why, well, all that you ever did was to build her. But she's not your ship. She's mine. And now you think that she can run without me, eh? Without anyone, Captain Holling. You're not going through with it. Gentlemen, please. You, you'll never live to do it. You won't live to... Oh, Miss King, please. Uh, Daddy? I'll be all right. Come on, Captain. Yes, sir. You let it. I'll be all right. Daddy? Yes, sir. I'll be all right. Give me a glass of water, Miss King. Perhaps you gentlemen will leave me alone with him. I'll arrange to send him to a sanitarium, Mr. Watson. I'm sorry we waited this long. Thank you. I'd give anything in the world if this hadn't happened. It's up to you now, Captain Downey. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the honor, but... It isn't easy to accept it under these circumstances. In his right mind, he'd want you to carry on. You and Rogers. You'll take down his place as chief mate. Well, thank you, sir. I have every confidence in both of you. You understand, gentlemen, that what you are about to see must remain a secret. Yes, sir. Captain Downey, you sail tomorrow as usual. At nine o'clock, when the Guthrie is at sea, it will be operated by Professor Grimson from his laboratory. My work is finished, Watson. It is now up to S-505. What is S-505? The uh, tube controls the energy which will operate it by radio. It's uncanny, Professor. It's science. Watson, don't forget to install this telescope in the cabin so that you can keep in constant contact with the laboratory. That's all arranged for.
Can't you get their wavelength? I'm trying to, Your Excellency. There. I think I've got them. Right. They're testing S505. Is that what you get? Right, Your Excellency. will do everything that you say it will, it will control the sea. Radio-controlled battleships and submarines would have won the world war in the first year. Its future possibilities are inconceivable if it succeeds. Give me the combination now, Mr. Watson. When S-505 is returned to that room before you sail tomorrow, it won't be necessary for a human being to set his foot in that room again. Not even you, Captain. How is he? He's better. Dr. Howard has made arrangements for him to go to the sanitarium. honor to be of the slightest assistance to you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Well, see you tomorrow, Downey. Yes. Sims, what do you want up here? Captain Norling. Is he any better? No, Sims. He's been relieved. You can go back to your cabin job. I'm master of the ship now. Yes, sir. Too bad, sir. What are you trying to do? Trying to make a bowl in a bite, sir. yourself an echo. sailor would think of this way to strangle a man. Has he no idea who attacked him? Uh, no, he, he was sleeping in the next room when he heard someone in here. He put on his robe, but before he had the time to turn on the lights, the, the rope was around his neck. Uh, that's all he remembered. There's nothing I can do for Professor Grimson. His neck is broken. He may live for hours or die while Major Pope is questioning him. This, uh, Major Pope, just who is he? Oh, uh, he's a private investigator that Professor Grimson has known for some time. You see, the professor didn't want to call in the police. Did you anticipate this attack? For a long time, I felt that I had been followed. You're convinced that your assailant was after the tube that you call S-505? 
did he get it? It wasn't here. I gave it to Watson for safekeeping. You should have taken equal precautions for your own safety, Professor. My life amounts to little. It's my work that must live. I understand, Professor. What? How long ago? Well, let me know the moment you hear anything. Captain Holling, escaped from the sanitarium last night. That accounts for the attack. A most convenient conclusion, Commander. But I'm inclined to agree with Professor Grimson that whoever attacked him was after the tube S-505. But it hasn't been proven a success. That's why I feel certain that the man who went this far will go farther, once the success of S-505 is assured. There's no doubt in my mind that he'll be aboard the Guthrie when it sails. But at Professor Grimson's request, I shall also be aboard, if you think I can find accommodations. I'll take care of it, Major. Thank you. What of Captain Halling? They found no trace of him, Excellency. Have you instructed your agent on board the Guthrie? Yes, Excellency. He will not fail. To make doubly sure, I myself have placed another man on the Guthrie. What? 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 Alice? Oh, whoa! I apologize. I apologize. Oh, I must have dozed off. Oh man! What? I doze off, and Alice does her shenanigans, and. Oh, are those heads or baby heads on there? I don't know what that is. I apologize if that scares you. Alice has a weird sense of humor. Oh, shenanigans. But, yeah, um, this film might be a snoozer. Alice, is, is that a pun? No, I actually did fall asleep. This movie might not be too exciting, but... It's the beginning, so you know it can always get better. It could always get better. It's it's from what I saw, it's not horrible. It's just lots of dialogue, not a lot of movement going on. So yes, Alice, I know it's a mystery. Mysteries usually don't have a lot of action. Oh boy. So you you actually are are digging the film so far. You like mysteries, even if it isn't Scooby Doo. Oh boy. I tell you, I tell you, but hopefully you're not falling asleep at home. Yes, indeed. And like I said before, the weather has been so hot lately. I am looking forward to fall and winter. Alice is not. She says Bubbles does not like winter because Bubbles doesn't have any or very little fur left okay with that i think we should get back to this film and i'm hoping that it it picks up a little bit maybe there'll be some added characters that maybe push this movie forward we shall see it's not horrible but it's a little slow and i fell asleep and i apologize so so without further ado let us get back to the adventure i don't know about adventure mystery mystery yes from 1934. Mystery Liner. Don't shut me! I don't think I've ever been on board ship before in all my life. I'm not decrepit yet. Oh, 
I lost my magazine. Oh. Here, Granny, you hold them. Oh. I'll be right back. I can get along without you. Got along all right without you before you were born. Uh, there's, uh, there's something I want Just to ask moment, you, please. please. Yes, sir, but this is most important. That's yes, right. sir. It's a mistake, boys. Never mind. Uh, uh, yeah, what I want to ask you is to say, uh, yes. I want to sit at the captain's table. <laughs> on the captain's right. Now, we'll uh, try and take care of that for you. Yes, thank I'll you. I'll have to look over my list. Thank right. you so much. I... Who is that very distinguished looking gentleman there? Uh, well, that is our head waiter. Oh, well, we'll skip that. Uh, <laughs> Here it is, Granny. I found it. Oh, I find kind of a rescuer this is going to be for me. The only rest I'll ever get from you is when I'm in the grave. Oh, please, Granny, you're exciting yourself I'm again. not excited. You know what the doctor said. Never say doctor to me again. What am I here for? To get away from them. What are you waiting for? Waiting for you, ma'am. Well, why didn't you say so before? I've been standing here long enough. Goodness gracious me. At least somebody might pay me a little attention. Uh, did the ship's doctor get my message? Uh, yes, he did, Mr. Morton. And Mrs. Clinton will have every attention, I'm sure. Thank you very much. At the shore, Winslow, Mr. Watson. appearance of that door. I don't think you need worry about anyone disturbing that room. Nevertheless, we're relying on all of you. If there's any change in Professor Grimson's condition, you'll hear from me. Otherwise, you'll be ready for contact at nine o'clock. Sorry you're not coming with us, sir. A voyage like this is something to live for. I only hope Professor Grimson lives for it. Good luck. Thank you. How do you do? Uh, is that uh, your secret? Yes. 407. Then we are neighbors. <laughs> and of course, uh, we couldn't really be neighbors unless uh, we could borrow something. <laughs> uh, might I ask you for the loan of a corkscrew? Corkscrew, sir. Accidentally, I have one with me. <laughs> oh, thank you so oh. much. And, uh, if it's good stuff, we'll have the uh, pleasure later. <laughs> that is, of course, if you'll join me. I shall be honored, Mrs. Sir. Uh, uh, Plimpton. The Rochester Plimptons. So I suppose you've never been to Rochester. Rochester? But I regret I missed the charm of it until now. <laughs> oh, that's enough. <laughs> I'm too old for flattery, even though I must say you do it remarkably well, Mr. Um... Von Kessley? Oh, of course, I might have known you came from the continent. Continental men are my weakness. <laughs> You're traveling alone, Mrs. Plimpton? Oh, yes. Uh, that is, unless you count Edgar. Edgar. Uh, it's the same thing as being alone. Grandson, blue-blooded on his father's side. Blue blood, but cut. Oh. The Mortons were all that way. Well, thank you again so much. <laughs> Welcome. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Stop! Put that back. I put him in the wrong stipe room, ma'am. But I'm sorry you ate the Countess. You're sorry? Hmm. Nincompoop. Report to my cabin and drop the pilot. Yes, sir.
Great adventure, Captain. It's wonderful to be alive, isn't it? And see the world progress in front of you. I hope Professor Grimson lives. It's too bad, Donnie, but there's never any progress without tragedy. Someone is going to have to pay for it. Someone who... Oh, you were the secret of S-505? Come in. We've got the pilot, sir. Take the bridge, Mr. Rogers, till we're a beam kick John Light. Yes, sir. Dr. Howard and Miss Kane, I'll speak to you, sir. Where are they? Doctor? What is it, Doctor? Aye, aye, aye. Aye, that's all right. Major Pope here is Mr. Watson's representative this trip. Oh, I see. I have just completed an analysis of Captain Holling's blood. And what have you found, Doctor? Traces of an uncommon drug that's hardly known outside the West Indies. It has the peculiar properties of temporarily paralyzing the nerve centers of the brain. What, in your opinion, is the means of getting this poison into his system? His food, drink, perhaps even the tobacco that he smoked might have been drugged. Why, Captain Holling didn't have an enemy in the world. The world is very large, Captain Downey. But this liner, fortunately, is a little world all its own. You mean that anyone on board this ship... Who else would have been close enough to him to systematically administer a poison without exciting his suspicions? But no one was any closer to him than we people in this room. Yes. Quite so. Are you implying that one of us... It was your own suggestion, Mr. Rogers. I presume that Miss... Miss Kane. Miss Kane here had charge of Captain Holling during his illness. Yes, she did. Did he at any time... Drop a hint as to any bad feeling existing between himself and anyone on board. Not that I know of. You're quite sure, Miss Keane? Of course. Don't you suppose I'd tell you? Unless you were shielding someone. Don't you think that's going just a little too far, Major Pope? Do you object to my questioning, Miss Keane? She told you she doesn't know anything about it. Isn't that enough? Well, if she's nothing to conceal, why should you be so concerned? Do you mean by that she... Shielding me? That's absurd. Why don't you ask who had anything to gain by... by removing Captain Holling? Well, I realize, of course, that Captain Downey owes his promotion to what happened. Are you trying to say... Of course he isn't. Say what you mean. Major Pope said it. Take it up with him. Um. Yes? Yes, she's here. I'll tell her. Passenger name of Morton asking for you. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. I told them I'd be here. It's the printing case, Doctor. Oh, yes. If you have no more questions to ask me, may I go to my patient? Certainly. the bridge, Mr. Rogers. I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Isn't there enough trouble between you and Downey without making it worse? What's the matter? Afraid I'll hurt his feelings? Cliff, you're absolutely impossible. I see, Doctor. Thank you. I'll be in the hospital if you want me. Thank you. What's the trouble between you and Rogers? Again? Leave her out of it. Oh, I see. You know, I thought for a moment he knew something that might incriminate him. You were quick enough to take the words out of his mouth. You know, Captain, Miss Kane is a very, very charming young lady. Hello? 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 
If the boss so busy, it can't answer the telephone. Now, what is it? It's me, Granny. It would be. Not now. Later. Come in. This is Miss Kane, Granny. How do you do? I was doing all right till you came in. Granny, I asked Miss Kane to see you. It's her nerves. That's why the doctor recommended this trip. Oh, I'm sure it's going to do you a world of good. Yes, it'll do me more good if I never heard that again. There's nothing the matter with me but Edgar. And he's nothing much. Granny! Don't keep reminding me of that. It isn't my fault that your mother had to get married. Now be off. Go on. I'm not you, Edgar. If you want me for anything. <laughs> what would any woman want you for? Well, if you're going to insult... <laughs> no use. I've given up trying. <laughs> You think old age had burdens enough without carrying that? I'm sure he means well, Mrs. Simpson. What do you know about it? Trying to wish a nurse on me. <laughs> Never felt better in my life. Well, then I'm sure you won't need Dr. Howard. I don't even want to look at him. Oh, but he's not at all bad to look at. Rather handsome, in fact. But I'll tell him he needn't drop in. You needn't tell him anything of the kind. If he chances to drop in, well... It'll be perfectly all right. Are you sure there's nothing more I can do for you? No. And this. You can get me something to go with that. I'm afraid not, Mrs. Clinton. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, Miss Keene. Would you feel safer to talk? Uh, now that we're alone? There isn't anything more I can tell you. You mean at this time? If you want to put it that way, Major Pope. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Oh, dear me, you're, you're Major Pope. Uh, you're not the gentleman I borrowed this from, are you? If you were, I could return it to you at once. But now, of course, I can't. It is so silly of me to mistake you for it, someone else. When yours is a face one couldn't possibly forget. <laughs> I, I must apologize no, no, to no, no, you. No. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Uh, this is the gentleman who loaned me the corkscrew. Uh, uh, Mr. Von Kessling, do you know uh, Major Pope? How do you do, Major? A pleasure, Mr. Uh, Von Kessling. Thank you so much. I had nothing to go with it after all. <gasps> oh! Isn't it nice we don't have to wait for the 12-mile limit uh, anymore? You don't from the bar. Huh? You want to try the Bacardi. Oh. oh. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps yes. you join me there. Oh. Uh, later. Better late than never. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, Alice, I'd have to agree with you. Granny is great. Oh, I was, you know, I was hoping that they would introduce a character that would bring a little flair to the movie. And oh boy, does Granny ever. Yes. Who is she? That's Zephy Tilbury. Yes, indeed. She was in many films many films but mostly known for from a 1940 movie the grapes of wrath and from 1935 werewolf in london yes indeed yes indeed and the way she treats her her, her grandson is hilarious hilarious a lot of one-liners um, called somebody a nincompoop, which is hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. So just with Granny in the film, this is turning into a fun film indeed. And it's turning into a classic whodunit. Yes, indeed. There isn't a butler in this film. It's always the butler. Somehow it will be the butler, Alice says. I 
don't think so, Alice. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, okay, Alice. Alice wants to let everybody know, at the end of the show, we usually have a cartoon, but we're going to have a little, like, short, really short film to show you. So something a little different. Alice wanted something a little different. She's, she wants to try different things. She likes to be spontaneous. Well, maybe you should like to have the air conditioner on. That'd be different and spontaneous for you. No. Okay. With that... Oh boy. With that, let's get back to this film and more Granny. We want more Granny. Zephy is hilarious and great. You could say we are a part of her fan club. So without further ado, let us get back to Mystery Liner. I hope you don't mind my being here. Not as long as you waited for me. I wanted to see you alone. About that man, Pope. His insinuation about you was vile. Do I mean that much to you? Let's not talk about things like that now, when there's so many more important things to think about. Nothing's ever been as important as you. Let's make this our last trip. You mean you'll leave the sea? What will we live on? Oh, I'll have plenty. You will? A rich uncle? Something like that. Don't go. Oh, I must. Come in. Well, I've just checked the engine room and wheelhouse. Everything's set to go the minute we receive word. And when we get it, I'll tell you, so you won't need to come snooping around. I didn't know I'd be intruding. Oh, I was just going. No, wait. You've stuck your nose into the wrong place once too often, Rogers. You've made your last trip with me. That's great. When it's over, I'm going to give you something I've been saving up for a long time. Well, if that's all you're waiting for, now is as good a time as any. Steve, clear. Nami. I just saw him, sir. He was looking at me. The plainest day, sir. Captain Owen. Are you crazy? He'd strike me dead if I didn't see him, sir. The door of 406 opens, and he looks at me, sir. He don't say nothing. And I don't answer him. Come on. Me, sir, go on with him. Hello. Did Major Pope leave word where to find him? 
Well, get him. Ask him to get up here as fast as he can. Hey, Joe. Open this door. Sims claims he saw Captain Holling in here. Captain Holling? Take a look in there. Yes, sir. Scotch and soda on a night like this. <laughs> Who do you suppose that attractive woman can be? Well, that's the Countess, Countess Bernese. Looks like Grand Rapids to me. <laughs> you mustn't judge your fellow travelers by appearances, Mrs. Plimpton. You never know who your neighbor really is, do you, Mr. Von Kessling? It's one of the charms of travel. Isn't it, Major? It is quite the <laughs> Aging Major Pope. Aging Major Pope. Oh, boy. Pardon me? I'm so sorry. Will you excuse me? Oh, must you? Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, I suppose it can't be helped. No, it can't. I'll join you later. <laughs> Charming man, the Major, isn't he? I should like to know more about him. So would I. Will you excuse me? You too? Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I might have guessed it with all these young girls about. Go ahead and enjoy them. <laughs> Silly little things. Oh, isn't that, Mrs. Plimpton? I have a slight headache. I have some aspirine in my seat room. Well, why didn't you mention it before? I have just the thing you need. No, I wouldn't trouble you for no, anything. No, 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 no trouble at all. You're coming with me. But, but... Now, come along. This way. No one in there, sir. But I tell you, I saw him, sir. What have you been drinking, Sam? Not a drop, sir. So help me. But if it weren't him, it was his ghost it was. Do you believe in God? Well, when you see him with your own eyes, what are you going to believe, sir? Hello? Get me the captain. Or he says, put him up. Oh, what's happened? Where's Granny? Oh, she's not here. Sim saw he saw a... Uh, uh... A stowaway. Hello, captain? There's no one here. Well, Sims was mistaken. But how could he be? Sims knows Holling when he sees him. Make a thorough search. Yes, sir. Where was this? Right below in 406. If Captain Holling is on this boat... Pull yourself together, Captain. As soon as I have, you'll know something about medicine. Now, this is something that was recommended to me by one of the finest specialists in New York City. Really? Oh! A pity we weren't invited to the convention. <laughs> what is this? Oh, uh, there's nothing to be alarmed about, Mrs. Plimpton. An army in my room, maybe that wouldn't alarm you. What are you men doing in there? Looking for a man, Granny. A man? Oh, wait. Oh, but there's no one there. Sims only thought he saw. Thought? <laughs> Getting me all excited again over nothing at all. Oh. You two men keep a sharp lookout. Yes, sir. Singular place to be looking for a stowaway officer, huh? The steward was mistaken. Give you a feeling of assurance, Captain? I don't see what you have to be afraid of. Holling's out of his mind, isn't he? A maniac. He might do anything. To the man who made him that way? To anyone. No one's safe with him around. How do you know he's on board at all? Who else has seen him? How do you know that Sims saw him? Why would he lie about it? 
Well, to be time enough to inquire into that or to worry about howling after nine o'clock. Do you think I'd let that experiment go ahead with that maniac loose on this ship? I was in that next room when he warned Watson not to go ahead with it. I saw him start to attack Grimson. Do you think he'd stop now? Well, anything might happen. You can't get into that control room to stop it. At nine o'clock, this liner goes under radio control until S-505 has proven a success or failure, whether you like it or not. is what? Ask him to repeat the message. around his neck when I found him just now. You didn't like him, did you, Rogers? Come in. I've been forward, sir, and found nothing. Jack and Downing. What do you know about this? Nothing, sir. Nothing unless Captain Downing. That's exactly what I thought you'd say. I don't understand, sir. I... You said you'd seen Holling on board, so you'd have an alibi. Why did you kill Downey? I didn't. What would I want to kill him for? You held a grudge against him for reducing you to a cabin steward. What's that got to do with killing the man? I never had no fight with him, I didn't. Like you had. Oh, I heard you down here. Having an elf with him and Miss Kane right here in this room. And he was going to strike me once. Come in, Mr. Van Kessling. You can hear much better in here. An unpleasant night to be on deck. 
What are you doing out there? I came here to speak to Captain Downey. Your explanation that a mere stowaway caused all the disturbance in Mrs. Benton's stateroom didn't quite satisfy my uh, curiosity. Unfortunate that your curiosity should have waited so long. And it brought you here a few minutes before Mr. Rogers discovered the body. It might have been helpful to us in indicating who murdered Captain Downey. Doctor? His neck was broken. Yes, with that. Oh, horrible. Rogers found him. Give me a hand, Tim. But who? Not only is Kane, Mr. Van Kessling doesn't know any more about it than you do. It's merely his curiosity that gives us the honor of his presence. Well, then who? You don't believe it was Captain Harling? Have you any reason to think it might have been? I don't know. I was looking for when you found me along with Mr. Downey. Voodoo Medicines of the West Indies. Why, that book belongs in my library. The last time I saw it, Mr. Downey was reading it. It disappeared from the library after that. I thought you didn't tell us all you knew. If you thought that Downey had poisoned Holling, why didn't you tell us? I couldn't, until I was sure the book was there. Would you be so quick to tell us now if Captain Downey was still alive and said that the book had been planted? Are you implying that I put that book there? You've said enough, Hope. Granting that Downey did poison Holling, even you must perceive that he didn't obligingly kill himself to make room for Captain Rogers. You're forgetting that he died the same way Professor Grimson was struck down. By the same hand. <laughs> Not necessarily by the same hand. But by someone who knew how Professor Grimson was struck down. And if Captain Holling is on board... And if he's not, there still remains someone on board so vitally interested in the outcome of this experiment but he doesn't stop at murder. Well, Captain, three minutes. Just a moment, Mr. Von Kessler. Nobody leaves this room. I beg your pardon? I'm making no exceptions. You're as much under suspicion as anyone here. Well, still, I, I have certain rights. Look here, Von Kessling. Something is about to happen here that's bigger than your rights or mine. You're welcome to remain as a guest or be placed under arrest and put in irons. Will you tell them we're waiting for contact? Oh, boy, it's picking up, Alice. It's picking up. They thought they saw Captain Holling. Downey is dead, and they found a book on voodoo. So it's really starting to get a little spooky and heated. Ha ha, Alice. Alice says, heated for you because I don't, I turned the air conditioner off earlier today. Oh boy. Oh boy, Alice. You're so mean. She laughs. But yes, this film is is picking up a little bit. I'm thinking it's 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 pretty decent. It's nothing out of this world, but it is decent. And a little bit about voodoo. Um, what I've read and done some of my research. Alice says nobody wants to hear about this, but okay. There's probably one or two people that do. But anyways. Basically, 
somebody would, you know, drug somebody and the drug they would give them would basically, the doctors back then would think that the person was dead. And of course, you know, they would have bury them. Then the person would come to life buried, be freaking out. And then the person who drugged them would roughly know when, when the drug should wear off and they would unbury them. And then basically that person that was buried would be so grateful that this person saved them that they'd probably do anything for them and basically kind of be like that person's zombie. That's one take on um, voodoo and zombies. You ruin everything, Alice says. That's just, you know, some people say that's what happened. I, nobody probably knows for sure. So, good, because zombies are real. Okay, Alice. Oh, man. Oh my gosh, it's so so hot. I apologize, but heat heat and me don't work very well. I, you know, Alice says if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, luckily this isn't the kitchen, Alice. Feels like it though. Oh boy. But anyways, let us get to the home stretch of this film. You know. Granny is hanging in tough. Granny is still alive. If Granny wasn't alive right now in the film, I think I'd maybe go back to sleep. Yes. So without further ado, let us get back to the film from 1934. Mystery Liner. Yes, sir? Eh? Mr. Haynes, at 9 sharp, your light will flash from the control room. Stand clear after that. Under no circumstances, touch the wheel without orders. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Rogers. The turn the engine is off now. Waiting. Contact. Hope. Everybody quiet. We'll hold present course at 15 knots. We'll hold present course at 15 knots. How much longer? Five seconds. What are you doing now? Fifteen knots. Fifteen knots. Without the help of a man on board. Tell him it works. Sixty-five degrees.
increasing speed to 20 knots. Twenty knots. Twenty knots? Uncanny. Never so bored in all my life. If that woman's a singer, I'm a canary. Been better off if I'd gone to bed. out. Now what's the matter? Ouch! Oh. So this is the life of a sailor. Oh. Take it easy, folks. They'll be on in a minute. I can mix them in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Going full speed ahead with lights out. Well done, Professor Vincent. an S505 and replaced it with our scrambled tube. Who's there? What is it? The doctor. Doctor, doctor, please help me. It's What's the matter? What? Captain Hurling. Get a 
crowbar. Get something. We've got to get this open. A crowbar? Yes, sir. Is he conscious, Doctor? No, no. i got to talk to him. No, no, no. Captain Holland. Can you hear me? Uh, Captain Holland. Uh, Tell me the combination of the safe. Uh, a book. book. A book case. Uh, book case, Alan? Uh, 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 they cannot break our contact. We are in control. Where's the plane? Ten miles off Cape Loma. He'll be over to Guthrie in a few minutes. Perfect. Are we on our own power? Yes, sir. Ask me to head. Get back on your course. I'll trouble you for my cane, Mrs. Templin. Your cane? Then you were the man that was in my room. Why, of course I was in your room. Oh. I chased the man out of your room. And through that door... There's the man you want, Captain Rogers. He's the man who killed Downey. Be careful, he's got a gun on him. As you are, folks. My plan is to pick you up. You're out of luck. All right, Joel. Joel, who is this, uh, this Von Kessel? Inspector, Bureau of Navigation. If you would have destroyed that S-505, I would have saved it. That too wasn't the S-505. Where is that tube? Where is that tube? You're an inspector. You tell me. out of the cane. Well, after all, you can't hang a man for wanting that too. No. But you can be hung for murder. Your bullet didn't make as good a job of me as your rope made of Downey. See, I didn't know until tonight that you were both agents of some international power. You thought that you had prepared yourself for every emergency, didn't you, both? Even Downey didn't know that secret panel that you cut in the wall of the stateroom below. No. No one knew but me. And when I discovered it several weeks ago, I cut that secret passage in the wall over there. And I was standing behind there, listening to you, when Downey lost his nerve. He wouldn't go through with it. That's why you came back and murdered him. All right. Take him alone. Put him in iron. Oh, Mrs. Plimpton, I hope the trip does you a world of good. Major, don't forget your limp. Thank you for what you've done. Mr. Watson requested me to come on board just before you left. You'll be mighty glad to hear that you're alive and well. Yes, but he won't be if he doesn't sit down and take things oh. easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, Doctor. Yeah. So you're a detective. Yeah. How wonderful. You know, detectives have always been a weakness of mine. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I didn't get an opportunity to thank your watchman for tying up Edgar. I'm so sorry, but you know, he had to do it. The boy was in a way. You're telling me? Oh, Sim. Yes, sir? Uh, I think a little jolt of brandy would do the captain good. Right, sir. A jolt? I could do with a couple of quarts myself. 
Welcome back, and that is the end of Mystery Liner. Major Pope was the main villain. Yes, indeed. I did not see that coming at all. You did not either. And John Holling was the hero of the film. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Where is Bubbles? Bubbles has a date. If it's not you, it's Bubbles. Dates, dates, dates. Alice says, caretaker, you should try going on one. Different subject. Hope you enjoyed tonight's film. And I got to say, it started slow, but it picked up. It picked up. Granny really, really helped the film, indeed. And the reveal of who was the villain was a little bit of a surprise so that's always good surprises are good ha ha alice alice says caretaker if you like surprises why do you hate it when people arrive unannounced that's different but anyways alice let's go to the review and ranking of this film you want to go first okay Okay, Granny was the star of the film, and you like mysteries, so you're going to give this an 8 out of 10. Wow, Alice. What do you mean, wow? What are you, you going to give a caretaker, she says. Oh, boy. Okay, my review and ranking. Okay, well, it started as a snoozer, as I fell asleep at the beginning of it. And it moved slow. It picked up. Granny was the star. Alice, I have to agree with you on that as much as it pains me to ever agree with you. And the, like I said, at the end, Major Pope being the main villain was a surprise. So I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this a 6.5. I was going to give it a 6, but Granny pushed it to the 6.5. That's too low of a score, Alice says. No, I think that's about right, at least for me. Yes. So we hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Spine Chilling Cinema. And if you enjoy the show, you can always go to Facebook, type in Spine Chilling Cinema, go to our page, give the page a like, um, comment if you want. Um, Alice says if you comment, keep it to nice things because I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into that, Alice. I'm not going to tell them what you've done to people that have posted really, really mean things. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> Alice, I'm telling you, you're something else. Alice says, yes, I'm one of a kind. Okay, we have come to the end of the show, and Alice usually picks out a cartoon, but tonight she picked out a little short film. She hopes you like it, and if you don't, then oh well, she says. <laughs> so with that, as always, thank you for tuning in to Spine Chilling Cinema and starting your weekend right with a fright or a mystery. And until next time, we cannot wait to see you again.